Okay, now let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting hard drives. So you can learn a little bit how to troubleshoot problems with those hard drives. Now problems are caused by the hard drive during the boot can be caused by the hard drive subsystem, by its file system on the drive, or by files required by Windows when it begins to load. So when trying to solve a problem with the boot, you need to decide if the problem is caused by the hardware or the software. Generally speaking, hardware problems usually show up at the post or the power on self-test. Like I said, this could be due to the drive, the data cable, the electrical system, the motherboard, or possibly even the SCSI host adapter. There's lots of different areas that you need to think about when you're diagnosing these hard drive issues. Now there are times that there can be hardware problems with the hard drive that don't show up during the post because there is some physical damage to an area on the hard drive that the post test does not actually access. So just keep that in mind as well that just because it gets past the post doesn't mean that there is not a physical damage to the hard drive that's causing the problem. Now you might have seen some of these issues but um, if your BIOS can't find a hard drive at post, it will display some messages similar to like no boot device available. That's When you see that screen, that's usually a good idea of, oh, I should probably check the hard drive. Whether it's, you know, first of all, making sure all your connections are made. If it's a hard disk, see if you can, or try to listen, see if you can hear any of the, the disk spinning. You know, it may be a bad hard disk. Um, Unfortunately, with the solid state, you can't really listen like you can with the hard disks, but the error will still be the same. Perhaps you know it might the error might say hard drive not found. Well, that's a pretty good uh, error message to tell you exactly where to look. Uh, fisk, fixed disk error, an invalid boot disk, or you might see some numeric error codes that pop up on the screens that range in the 1700s or 10,400 range. Or it might even say something as um, simple as an inaccessible boot drive or boot disk. So if you suspect, you know, based on errors or sound or whatever the case may be, that you, you believe it to be the hard drive, there's some things to do and check before opening the case. Check to see if BIOS displays a numeric error code, like I said, or other message during the post. Check your BIOS setup for errors in the hard drive configuration. If you have a flash drive or an external hard drive that you can use to boot from, try booting from that bootable media. Now if it's an arrayed array, use the firmware utility to check the status of each disk in the array and check for any type of errors that may be occurring. Once you've checked this, if you need to move on, go ahead and open up the case and check you know, some of these things such as remove and attach all of your drive cables to your hard drive. And if you're using a RAID or SATA or PETA or SCSI controller, remove and reseat it or replace it into a different slot if available. If you're need, if you've got an IDE drive, go ahead and check your jumper settings to make sure they're set correctly. Take out your hard drive and check for any type of physical damage or you know even if it's electrical such as a burn mark. S inspect the drive for any type of damage that can be easily seen. As I said, you can turn the power on and check to determine if the hard drive is spinning if it's a hard disk drive. Check your cables for any type of frayed edges or uh, pinches or any, any type of damage there. Once again, you can go out to the interweb here and check and see if the drive manufacturer has any type of diagnostic software you can install to test your hard drive. And as I said before, if you have one of those you know, USB hard drive kits that you can hook up to different connections of hard drives and then plug that into a USB port on a working computer, you can sometimes you know, test your hard drive this way as well as try to recover any type of files that are on there if it is still salvageable. If you can, you can move this device and install it as a second drive on a tower or even a laptop to see if uh, it's working properly or not. 
and you do have some field replaceable units that you can change as well on this such as with your data cables. Um, you can put in a new hard drive or a working hard drive to see if that hard disk error, that hard drive error goes away. So if you have another hard drive you can do this. And if you're working in an organization where you know you have a lot of the same machine you might have a hard drive sitting around that you have configured and ready to go in as a you know to swap out with a failed hard drive so it will already if you already have the image on it when you put it into that computer it should start up normally a couple things to think about too is and when troubleshooting hard drives a bad power supply on the computer or a bad motherboard might also cause this disk boot failure so if you try some of the other tests and you find that your hard drive is fine in another computer uh, then maybe and you've tried putting in a new hard drive and still the same problem you might think about those two issues that could be causing that problem now let's move on to discussing troubleshooting monitors and video now the most common issues with monitors and video cards are caused by improperly seated or connected cables or incorrect settings so the first things to do or check those easy things such as checking your cable connections checking your contrast brightness adjustments on the monitors first you will probably find that these monitor issues or these display issues that you come across are generally pretty easy to solve not always but some of the silliness you'll see will probably amaze you so ask yourself these questions and try checking some of these simple things such as is the monitor cable plugged in don't just assume that all of your connections are made. Definitely check over those. I've come across a lot of them where the power cable in the back or the video cable connector in the back is not properly seated or it's been unplugged, you know, at the power source or the the computer or docking station whatever the case may be. As simple as it is, people just think that there's something major wrong. You'll find out it could be something simple. Believe it or not, check to see if the monitor is even turned on push the power button never overlook that I've seen it happen many times yeah sometimes those are your nice day problems that you have to resolve that all you had to do was push the button and it worked but uh, sometimes people feel a little uncomfortable about that because you know that's all you had to do those are the good ones to get but um, definitely don't underestimate the issue don't overestimate the issue check those simple things if uh, if you can try a different monitor and a different monitor cable whenever I troubleshoot any type of display issues I always make sure to take a power cable with me a video cable with me and if I have a cart I usually take a, another display with me to hook up to help with my troubleshooting issues a lot of people will put in their connections and not properly secure them so you know if it's like a VGA connection make sure that you tighten both of the screws so that's making a properly seated connection if your monitor displays post but then goes blank when Windows starts to load problem is probably with Windows and not the monitor make sure that your monitor is set to the correct voltage make sure it's set to 110 if there's a setting for that as opposed to 220 you might find out that the problem is with the video card obviously that's a more expensive issue to fix but if you hook up your monitor to another computer and you know such if you're troubleshooting laptop you might find out that the problem is the video card itself with the computer if another display will not work with that and the problem display works with another computer you know check your contrast brightness alignment settings on your monitor because sometimes people tend to accidentally you know hit the buttons and then they freak out and they start hitting other buttons and they throw those settings off you know if you don't believe it's the monitor and you believe it might be the video card you know shut everything down remove the power reseat that video card it may be something where it's just been jarred loose and it's not making a proper pin connection in the available slot and um, if you have another video card you know swap it out and see if, if that's the issue that way it's the issue is resolved and the customer can get back to their work or whatever they're doing with their computer uh, test your RAM sometimes RAM will affect the display as well if 
if it's if all else fails, unfortunately, you may be at that point where you need to see if it's the mo the motherboard itself, and you need to swap that out with one that's good, or take the video card out, put it in another computer where you know the motherboard's good, and that might be the issue. You know, if you're working with the display on a laptop, uh, one of the simplest things to uh, test is to plug a monitor in to the display port or the video port on a laptop and see if that display is shown or not. Sometimes people mess with the function key to toggle between the LCD panel on their laptop and a second monitor, so you might need to set that back to display on their LCD screen.